Right now at 11, getting ready to race. USA Cycling in town for the seventh annual time tonight. How they're inspiring the next generation of racers. Plus, a child lost the parents found. What Knoxville police are saying about terrifying moments at an East Knoxville gas station. And remembering a life taken too soon. I miss all his jokes and him always putting a smile on my face. How a Knoxville family is honoring the life of a gun violence victim. And helping or hurting. A new iPhone feature causing problems as festival goers get excited. What police are doing and the recommendation from Apple right now at 11. Serving the people of East Tennessee. WATE 6 on your side news at 11 starts now. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Austin Martin. New details at 11. Interstate 40 westbound back open tonight after a tractor trailer caught fire. Now, this was the scene around 2 o'clock this afternoon. You can see there crews battling the blaze as smoke continues to billow out of that trailer. Traffic was backed up for miles, and just recently, three lanes have been reopened. We're taking a live look at the TDOT Smartway camera near Gallagher View Road. You can see there traffic moving just fine on both sides. Now, no word yet on the injuries or if there were any. We'll keep you updated as we learn more. New details now in a SWAT incident last night in Cock County. According to the Sheriff's Department there, deputies responded to a house on Grand Country Drive after receiving multiple 911 calls. When they got there, deputies heard someone fire two shots. Once they figured out where that gunfire came from, officers tried to call the suspect. Police say he refused to cooperate with them, sitting on a porch with a gun next to him. After a short standoff, officers took him into custody around 7 o'clock last night. That suspect has been identified as 57-year-old Rain Corey. He was booked into the Cock County Jail on a $35,000 bond. He's facing several charges, including aggravated assault and reckless endangerment. New tonight, a child's parents have been found after she was found alone at a gas station. According to a tweet from Knoxville Police, a three to four year old girl was found at Good Stop on East Magnolia Avenue just before four this afternoon. In an update around six tonight, KPD saying the child's parents have been located. Officers are still trying to figure out exactly what happened. Again, those parents of that child have been found. Continuing coverage now, two teens charged in a high-profile Knoxville murder back in court for another sentencing. Rashawn Jordan and DeAndre Davis were convicted in the 2021 first-degree murder of 16-year-old Stanley Freeman Jr. That automatically carries a life sentence, but for a juvenile conviction, it's 25 to 36 years. Now, yesterday, the two teens were sentenced to an additional 12 years in relation to the aggravated child abuse charge where they were convicted in May. Now, family members of Freeman Jr., gave statements on how his death has affected them and how much they miss his bubbly personality. All his jokes and him always putting a smile on my face. I always remember every time I come over my grannies and I'll be bummed out about college or exam. He'd be like, cheer up, Kiki. You're going to be good. <laughs> I promise you. I just miss those type of little moments because those little things that he say, it does matter. And he always put a smile on the family face, no matter what circumstances. Family believes he had a bright future ahead of him, and they plan to keep his memory alive. <laughs> As USA Cycling continues this weekend, the organization wants to get people of all ages interested in the sport. WATE Six on Your Side reporter Ella Well spoke with one young cyclist who already has the passion to ride. Story tonight, a former firefighter in Claiborne County is dead after a car crash. The new Tazewell Fire Department posting to Facebook saying emergency crews responded to a rollover crash in Harrogate around 1130 Friday morning. Several people were found inside. One person was fatally injured. The person has been identified as a former member of multiple fire departments in Claiborne County. No name was released, but according to the new Tazewell fire, the firefighter took a leave of absence but was planning to return to the field. The Tennessee Highway Patrol is investigating that crash. 
Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Austin Martin. Our top story tonight, the driver suspected in a deadly hit and run last week is now behind bars. The Blount County Sheriff's Office says they have arrested 31-year-old Jeremy Valentine in connection to the Seymour crash that killed a man and put his wife in the hospital. It happened back on May 14th along Cunningham Road. BCSO says Charles Clark and his wife were hit head-on, killing Clark. The truck that hit them took off. We're told Valentine is charged with leaving the scene of an accident, but more charges could be on the way. Valentine is being held in the Blunt County Correctional Facility on a $150,000 bond. He'll be in front of a judge on Monday morning. Also new at 6, a Knoxville cheer coach and former UT cheerleader has been charged with child sex crimes. That's according to court documents. This morning, court documents show that Dominic Frizzle was booked into the Knox County Jail on a $100,000 bond. Back in September, 22-year-old Frizzle was named in a lawsuit against Varsity Brands, Premier Athletics, and others. He was a coach and athlete at Premier Athletics. He was accused with exploiting and abusing young athletes. The documents did not have details about exactly why he was arrested, so it's not known if those charges are in connection with that September lawsuit. Continuing coverage now, one person is dead, another is hurt in an early morning shooting here in Knoxville. Knoxville police tell us they were called to the cave near Magnolia Avenue and North Olive Street around 415 this morning. When officers arrived, they found one man shot. He was transported to UT Medical where he was pronounced dead. A second gunshot victim arrived at Fort Sanders Medical Center shortly after. He was stabilized and transferred to the UT Medical Center where he is still in the hospital at this time. There is no suspect at this time in the investigation remains ongoing. If anyone has any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 865-215-7165. Of course, that number is at the bottom of your screen as well. Welcome back, everybody. You know, a very nice day today, but tomorrow, mm -hmm. Not going to be so nice coming into the evening time. Oh, right. We're going to have to really pay attention to the weather. It's a weather aware day, and that's because we have a system that's building out of the Central Plains that will be coming our way, Austin. More rain, just what we need. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> we do, actually. We're still in the drought. I know we've gotten drenched. Some of us gotten drenched too much here over the past week, but uh, something we definitely need. We just don't Thanks for staying up late with us. Have a great night. GMT starts at 5 a.m.